Now I know a lot of you have seen the outside of our game bird in all our videos. And I know there's been a lot of questions about inside the cockpit and what we have in it. Well, today we're gonna to do a full cockpit walk around and then we're gonna pull the plane outside and take you through our startup procedures and how we operate this airplane. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's take you through the cockpit of the Gamebird GB1. It's a really slick, very simple cockpit. Uh, one of the things I like about this plane compared to my other planes is everything is sealed up in here. So if you drop something, a phone or something, it's not gonna get in between all the bars and kind of roll back. If you wanna know more about all that and the carbon fiber and all the stuff that's on this airplane, go watch our full video, uh, full walk around of the plane. But today I'm only gonna focus on the cockpit here. And I'm just gonna kind of do a flow. We're gonna go around the cockpit. First, let's talk about the canopy lock. As you can see here, passenger and pilot have access to it, and it just basically locks in place just like that. You've got a little T-handle here that slips down inside the fuselage. So the T-handle comes right down inside here, and then when it's in there, closes up just like that, and you're done. Coming down inside here, we have the hooker harnesses. So this is the four-point hooker harness. Now this one does not have the crotch strap that you see in a lot of the planes. And it's just the way that this plane is set up where you lean back a little bit more, your legs are up a little more. You just don't have it in this plane. And I'm gonna go through how to hook up your harnesses when you get in the airplane, because there is a very specific way and a reason why they get attached the way that they do. So we're gonna go through that in just a minute. Now I'm gonna pull down the harnesses here. You see I've got these little holders that I have here and these are not temporary, they're just kind of in there. And then behind there is we have our zipper pouches. And we have these zipper pouches on both sides. Those are great. You can throw your phone and stuff in there. And I typically, if I have passengers that have never flown aerobatics, I usually ask them for their phone or anything that's in their pockets. If they want their phone in the plane, I'll put it back here with me and then tell them if they want it, I'll give it to them. And then everything else we leave in the hangar so there's nothing in their pockets. Now, the nice thing about this plane is we have dual controls front and back. So the passenger and the pilot has dual controls. Now, a lot of planes only have prop and throttle in the front and don't have mixture. I don't like that because if you're an instructor and you're in the front seat, the student back here could actually shut the mixture off and you don't have any control of it up front. So I like how they have full controls in the front and back and then obviously you've got your yoke or your stick in the front as well. Now, right here, we have our light switch. Now, this is for our recognition lights for the wings. Now, it's on this side versus this on the other side. We'll get to the lights on the other side. You got position lights and your strobes on the other side. Over here, it's nice because you come up in your throttle, when you're taking off, lights on, you're set to go. So it's all in this one hand. Now, the other thing that's nice over here is right behind this throttle, you have a little button and that button switches the radios from radio two to radio one. So you can set up all your radios, four frequencies, and then we take off, you wanna change over, you just hit this button, changes it over, just like we had in our Bonanza and in the, in the Conquest. The other thing on this plane is it comes with a smoke system. So we have smoke on off here as well. And then up here, also on the left-hand side, you got your electric trim, not only elevator trim, but you have aileron trim as, as well, left and right. Now this plane is so sleek and so fast that when you take off at slow speed, it's gonna be about four greens down. And when you get up into high speed, it's like two greens. So it's a lot more sensitive than most aircraft. Let's go down here now. So down here in on our pedals, these pedals are adjustable. There's like seven stops and there's a pin right here. You can pull this pin up. And when you pull the pin up, you can slide the feet pedals back and forth. We have our fire extinguisher here. We have our cabin heat. So right there is our cabin heat. Into the middle here, we have our acro tank and our left right tank. I get into all the specs of how much fuel and range and speed and all that in the other video, the full walk around. You can go check that out. And by the way, please like and subscribe. If you want us to do more of these videos, let us know. Put a comment down there that you like that. So we've got our transponder and then we have our radio one. Now in this plane, there's two radios. So radio one, you can control here if you need to, and it also will show up here. And we'll show you that when we get out in the plane and do a startup. And then there's a black box behind here for radio two. So we have a main radio and a, and a number two radio. So you get your radio here, then we have USB. So we get the powered USB C's and normal USBs that are here. And I have this right now wired up to power up our phone because the nice thing about this plane is in our phone, we have our Sirius XM. This also has Sirius in the panel. But what I do is I have Sirius XM on the phone and it just drives by Bluetooth into our audio. We have our placards here with all our speeds. And then we have our airspeed 
and our annunciator lights. Now, the nice thing is so simple about this plane. There's three annunciator lights that you have to worry about. Oil temp, oil pressure low, and acro tank low. Acro tank obviously is your fuel. The other thing is, you know, we got to push the test. So when we get in and we go through our flow, we got to push the test to check the lights. Sorry about the noise, everybody. We got the Gulf Stream that's running the uh, ground power unit. Okay, then we have our G3X. The, the big screen. Now in the front, we have the smaller G3X and they are synchronized together. And then up front, we've got airspeed and altimeter. So that's really all I need up front. Coming back here, now we've got our accelerometer so we can measure our Gs, airspeed. And then on the right hand side, now I always have this one breaker pulled, which is the smoke breaker for the smoke system. And the reason is, is because sometimes when you go forward, you might hit that smoke. And I've had ATC a couple times ask me if everything's okay. Evidently, they don't know what airbag planes are all the time, but the uh, smoke system breaker, I keep it pulled anyway, just in case. Now we come down, we have our mags in our start key. Now, the nice thing about this key, it's also the key for the fuel tank caps. Then what we have here above it is our flight fix mount for our phones. Why flight fix? Go my go flight because it can handle the G's and stuff that we put through this plane. You also will see these little headsets here. Now they look a little odd. I call them my my audio tail. And the reason is, is these go to our lift helmet. Now this is new, newer technology. You might have not seen our video yet on this helmet, but go check it out. But on the back side of this lift helmet, we can actually put these in-ear pieces, CPs, plug them into our lift helmet. Then we have, these are in our ears, so then we have noise canceling on the outside and we have our inner ears on the helmet. This is a great little setup. So when I'm getting out of the plane, I just lay them right there and they're there for the next time that I get in the plane. So also we have is our fuel pump. We've got our alternator and battery switches. We have our avionics master, smoke refill. And we do a whole video on how to refill the smoke in this plane because it's, it's pretty interesting how the system works on this. Then we have our position lights and our strobe lights. That's the cockpit in a simple way. The seating and stuff is designed so that if you're wearing a parachute, so it's kind of made where it sits back in, you get your parachute on. And then of course we have our Limo plugs for our headsets here. Now, not only do you have Limo and you got the little holder right here, is you also have your standard Head, headphone jacks in your limo. I like it because we can film, get audio out of the regular jacks to our cameras. And then we've got limo powered for our Bose headsets or light speed or our, our actually helmet. That's the inside of the cockpit. We're gonna roll it outside right now. And uh, we're gonna get in the plane and we're gonna actually walk you through our checklist and our full startup procedure on the game bird. So we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, so we're in the cockpit, getting ready to go. And the first thing, of course, I do is I get my seatbelts on. And usually I have my parachute and stuff on, but we're just gonna kind of go through this and show you what we do. So you can see that these are on these hooks in a certain way. So you got where the lap belt comes off first, and then the shoulder harnesses come next. So you can see how that works, because it's a lot harder when you have your parachute on. I wanna talk a little bit about the hooker harness and why you need to hook it up exactly the way they do it. And I know that people do it different ways. First of all, if you have a crotch strap, it would come up here. In this scenario, if you had a crotch strap, you're gonna put your bottom on, the crotch strap comes up over this one and it holds it kind of steady there. So if you hit it with your yoke or something like that, you won't have a problem. The crotch strap comes up and they all three go on to this top one. So you go here, crotch strap over the top, your left shoulder, that's how it should be. And the reason is, is because if you put the crotch strap on the bottom here and your shoulder straps on the top, if you get in a situation where you ground loop and roll over, or if you go off the runway and roll the plane over and you're hanging in here, you would have these pulling and see what's happening here. It's tweaking these to the point and it's pulling them apart to the point where these can bind up and jam and you can't get your levers off. The other thing is I know a lot of people do is they'll take their top straps, they'll put them in the bottom, and then they'll put their top latch over that. You got the same scenario going on here. So if you actually get in a situation, you see what's happening here? This is all jammed up if you are hanging in this and it's gonna be hard to get those off. That's why Hooker suggests, and when you go through the mechanics, it absolutely makes sense. That's how it's supposed to be. Now, if all three are on one and you roll over, you're not binding this one up. 
and this is together all in one and it's equal because the bottom is pulling the same as the top then you can easily get these latches off so i wanted to talk a little bit about that because i know there's all kinds of conversations about how to hook up your harnesses logically it makes sense how you would put one over the other and all that but when you think about it what are these for? Therefore, when you get into a situation, how do they work? What I do while I still have the canopy open because we're in hot Florida suns here, as I go through my flow at this point, first of all, I go through my flow. I already did that. I kind of make sure my switch is everything where I need a macros on center. My switch comes on, my alt and my battery switch come on, my strobe and my position light comes on. And then I go through the process of throttle forward, mixture forward, checking my trims are in the right place go through, check my lights, my lights are clear. I reset my accelerometer and I'm doing all this while my panel's coming up. My altimeter is set, come down, make sure I'm in acro mode. Here is off, breakers. And I'm in a place where I'm now gonna go through my boost. That's why my throttles and stuff are up here. And we're gonna watch it come up here. One, two, three. Saw the boost pump come up, fuel came in. Mixture, throttle, come back. Now I'm moving my throttle to the first T. So I come up to the first T. I got my line here on the throttle, go to my first T. Engine's primed, throttles, everything's in place to go. So I'm gonna grab my helmet. And the nice thing about the lift helmet here is now I have my little end that I can put on here, which goes to my Lima. Now I'm gonna put my little headsets in. Long one goes on the left, short one goes on the right. Okay, so helmet's on, helmet's secured. I'm ready to go. Last thing I need to do, shut the canopy and start, get some airflow. So here we go. Canopy is locked, confirmed. We are good there and time to start. And we are clear. And a mixture comes up. Okay, so we got our engine start and checking our instruments. Everything looks good there. Voltage is a little low only because the uh, engine's a little bit low here, but we're going to now come into ground lean. So I'm saying ground lean. We're going to come back on the mixture a little bit till we just hear the engine start to come up a little bit only because these high performance engines and stuff, the way this thing is, is these back cylinders sometimes get a little foul before we get going. So another quick check, another cockpit check. We are good there. Of course, we are going to do all of our free and clear. And I do this three times in this airplane. So I do it on the ground before I start taxi and check my brakes and stuff. Then I do it at run up and then I do it just before when we're cleared to go. All right, so that's what we do to get the ball rolling, get the plane. We've done all of our checks here. Now we've got our clearance to taxi and uh, we're gonna come on with our taxi camera. So we got our taxi camera in front of us here, which is nice. I can see right in front of the camera, even though I still do a little bit of a S-turn as we're going down the taxiway. So uh, now we're just gonna head out the runway and we're blasting out of here. All right, see you in a minute. ride with us you got a feel for the cockpit and things we're doing and now we're going to shut down all right folks so hopefully you got a good view of what it's like and stuff so we just did our shutdown everything's off power's off mixers off lights are off everything's coming down all right everybody so you got a good feel for our procedure and the cockpit of the game bird so hope you enjoy that video like and subscribe please and uh, we'll see you on the full walk around go check that video out talk to you soon <laughs>